Hi, I'm Anton Chitty of VPG Micromeasurements in the UK. We're going to spend a few moments looking at a typical application for strain gauges. And here we have a lattice boom crawler crane, something quite common on many building sites throughout the world. We're going to talk about three aspects of strain gauging on this crane. The first is a stress analysis application. So you might want to know the maximum load that the boom can sustain without buckling. In this case, we've actually got a single gauge on one strut of the boom, and we see a close up here. And on the other side, we've got a three element rosette. Now, this shows that a three element rosette will more likely pick up the peak strain no matter what's happening on this boom, because it is possible that when you lift something up, that it starts swinging, and that can cause radically different loading to just a static lift. And we'll demonstrate that in a second. We may also have anti-tip protection systems that will look at the center of gravity. So if the boom is very low and trying to pick up a weight, you may well be able to overbalance the crane even if it's within its normal load rating. You may also have a load cell in line with the hook to look at the ultimate load on the hook itself. And that's very common, often using high resistance strain gauges because they are battery powered. It's very difficult to run a wire to that load cell. So we're just going to have a very quick look. So let's go to my system 8000 that is capturing the data off those two gauges that I mentioned. And we're just going to lift up the mass just to show you that we are getting some strain values there. And it is the weight swinging a little, but of course that's only a small amount. It could be possible that the mass starts swinging quite radically. And I've hit my system there. So uh, you can see the strain values are significantly higher. So that may present additional problems. Let's put that weight back down. Eagle-eyed people may also notice that particular piece of material on the end of the crane is actually a rock core sample that happens to have a strain gauge mounted on it ready for compression testing to look at the performance of the rock, perhaps from digging a foundation for a building maybe. So let's look at the actual data. So I'm just going to stop my data acquisition system and we're going to look at the data. And we're going to go straight to the scan session. And we're going to look at the calculated maximum principal strains and we're going to look at the measure strain on the single element rosette. So here we've got our data and notice that um, if I look at my microstrain L1, you can see that's the linear. You can see the, the yellow trace there. If we go to the minimum principal strain and then the maximum principal strain, you can see we've actually got the right microstrain values to then calculate stresses if we wish. This is also calculating the angle. So as the weight was swinging, you can see that the angle is also moving quite radically. So that's just a brief overview really of what you can do with strain gauges and how many strain gauge systems are integrated into many applications. Um, so yes, we have this uh, swinging problem. I'll try not to hit my system again. Um, but that shows very um, different loading cases based on what might be happening on a real site.